Howdy. I'm Bob Terry. And up next is an episode of a TV series called 26 Men. It's about the Arizona Rangers. And it's brought to you free on the web by Wild West Toys. You remember the days when you were a kid and you were watching all the wonderful Western television shows and perhaps you had been watching 26 Men and you strapped on your cap guns and you went outside and you and your friends were the Rangers. Well, those days aren't gone. It's not just video games for kids today. Wild West Toys still supplies American-made Western toy cap guns for kids to play with and for adults to collect. So if you want to see some American-made die-cast metal Western toy cap guns, if you want to shop online, you can go to www.toyguntown.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you after the show. Saddle up, saddle up, saddle up, saddle up, saddle up. This is the story of 26 men who rode the Arizona Territory. High is the glory of 26 men whose courage helped to build the territory. 26 men who saddled up and then rode up to answer duty's call. 26 men who lived to ride again and fight for the rights and the liberty of all. This is the story of 26 men enforcing law within the territory. Praise be the glory of 26 men who rode the Arizona Territory. Ride on, ride on, ride on. Hello folks, my name is John Redmond. I was a member of the original 26 men of the Arizona Rangers. Although the men this story is about are not with us today, I know it to be a true tale. Thank you. July the 14th, 1906. Arizona Ranger Johnny White Cloud, an Apache of the Pima tribe, and a graduate of St. Thomas Indian School, was being decorated for bravery. Ranger Johnny White Cloud, on behalf of the governor of the Arizona Territory, I am proud to present you with this medal, the recognition of your bravery above and beyond the call of duty. Congratulations, Johnny. Thank you, Captain. God bless you, Johnny. We of St. Thomas are very proud of you. I'd like to give this medal to the school, Father Diego. You see, it was here I learned there is a place in the white man's world for an Indian. That's very generous of you, Johnny. This medal will be placed where all of our students can see it and remember. Thank you. Brother Augustine, I think it's time that our children should return to their classes. Captain Ronning. It's a good thing for our children that they have a hero like Johnny. And we're grateful to you for having brought him here today. It just seemed the appropriate place, Father. I had to talk to you before you left, Johnny. Shouldn't you be in class with the rest of them? Yes. But I wanted you to know that I've been studying the book he gave me, and I've learned all of the Morse code and most of the wigwag signals. That's fine. You've got a new recruit, Captain. This is Peter Red Fox of the Navajo tribe. How do you do, Peter? The Arizona Rangers always need men. Study hard the way Johnny did. In a few years, we'll talk again. Now, Peter, you better get back to class. You know, it takes a lot more than just sending and receiving crow to make a good ranger. Yes, Father. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye, Peter. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Peter. What is it, Travis? The bank at Payson was held up yesterday, Captain. Uh, this is Sheriff Haley. Hello, Sheriff. How are you? Uh, he and his deputies rode into headquarters looking for you, so I brought him out here. It was Luke Baxter and two of his men. We followed them as far as the Salt River country and then lost their trail. How much money did they get away with? $20,000. They blew up in the safe after shooting the watchman. Where did you lose them, Sheriff? 
in the vicinity of Four Peaks. Johnny, you were raised in that territory. If you were in Luke Baxter's shoes, which way would you head? South. I head for the section of the river where it's shallow. Then I'd go downstream a ways. I'd come out where it's rocky. All right. We'll figure Luke is well acquainted with Salt River country, too. We've got to head them off before they reach the desert. Goodbye, Father. Sorry we have to leave so abruptly. I understand. Adios. Johnny White Cloud had figured Luke Baxter's movements more accurately than we realized. On July 15th, as we neared the rocky banks of the Salt River, where a trail led west to the desert, Luke and his two partners were riding through the shallow water a few miles to the north. been trailing those riderless horses. Ah, well, they must have taken to the river after they spotted us. And where they'll come out is anybody's guess. Sheriff, you and your deputies cross over and search the bank on the other side of the river. Right. We look for tracks on this side. Looks like they've given us the slip, Captain. Now those bells must be from St. Thomas. I didn't realize we were that close to the school. It's only a couple of miles away, Captain. The fathers used to bring us here for our swimming lessons. Travis, you and the others keep to the bank. I'll ride over to the school. There's a possibility some of the children might have seen Luke and his men. <laughs> Please, and keep out of sight. Wait for me.
startled me. I didn't notice you sitting in the shadows. You the head man here? I'm Father Diego in charge of the school here. I got to talk to you, Padre. You wish to make a confession? Something like that, yeah. Very well. Come with me. priests can't repeat anything you're told in one of these confession boxes. That is true. Not even to the law? To no one. I'm Luke Baxter, Padre. Me and a couple of friends of mine held up the bank at Payson yesterday and the watchman got killed. These are serious things that you tell me. We're on the run. The law is only a couple of jumps behind us. We got to find a place to hide out. You'll never find peace that way. Trust in God to be merciful. Give yourselves up. Oh, no, we're staying right here. Nobody will ever think to look for us in a church. I cannot permit that. It might endanger the lives of our children. You ain't got no choice, Padre. We're staying. But if they follow you, surely the law will come here and ask questions. That's your problem. As a priest, you can't say anything about what I've told you. And you're not going to say anything about us being here because somebody's going to get hurt. Father Diego! Father Diego! Peter, you know better than run out of chapel and raise your voice. I'm sorry, Father. I forgot. Captain Riley's outside. He wants to see you. Is he alone? Yes, sir. All right, Patrick, go on out. Be careful. I'll be watching you through the door. Jim stays here. You keep me company until you get back. Do as he says, Peter. I won't be long. Now you're talking sense. You'll be all right, as long as we understand each other. Any of you boys seen three men around here that you didn't recognize? Mm -hmm. You haven't seen any strangers at all? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, boys. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Captain. I didn't expect you back again so soon. You children all run back to your classrooms. The three bandits that held up the Payson Bank yesterday were trailed to the river a couple of miles below here. They left their horses and escaped on foot. Oh? You think they might come here? Well, I don't know. They'll have to get fresh mounts somewhere. None of the children have seen any strangers around. But I wanted to warn you to be careful. Thank you, Captain. I will be very careful. If you see any signs of them, please notify Ranger Headquarters immediately. The men are armed and they're dangerous. Fine. Shut the door. Move. In there. He spotted us, so we brought him in here. I don't like this loop. Came right coming into a church and pushing the priest around. I don't care what you like. I'm not going to get my neck stretched just because you got a pain in your conscience. It ain't no conscience, but it brings bad luck. Ah, uh, shut up. Ah! Fight me, will you, you dirty little Indian? Let him alone. He's just a child. He hasn't yet learned how to compromise with evil. Look, Padre, if you and your buddy do what we say, nobody will get hurt. We aim to stay for a while until things quiet down. Then you're going to furnish us with horses and grub and we'll clear out. Seems we have no choice in the matter. No, you don't. 
And uh, you're going to keep the school open and running as usual. Father Diego's staying with us, so make sure nothing goes wrong. Do as he says, Rick. You got anything to eat around here? We ain't had anything since yesterday. There should be something in the kitchen. I'll go see. Wait a minute. Kid, you go get it and hurry back. Pick up any tracks? Not a sign. Learn anything at the school, Captain? No. We'll keep looking for their trail. Three men can't just disappear into thin air. Sit down, Will, and relax. That Padre gives me heebie-jeebies and woman all the time. You would feel better if you prayed. You don't need prayers, Padre. His liver's bothering him. It's yellow. I've had enough of you, Jake. Cut it out! You've had enough trouble without fighting among ourselves. Where's that Indian kid? He ought to be back by now. I don't know. church bells I ever heard, Padre. Don't forget they're rung by the children. Here at the school, we ring the bells many times a day. They tell us when to sleep and when to awake. They call us to meals and pray. Hey, that's pretty smart, huh, Luke? Yeah, too smart if you ask me. Sounds like some sort of a code. Like a telegraph. If that kid's up to something, I'll kill him. Just a child he doesn't understand. some engine with him. You expecting someone? No, but monks from other missions do visit us from time to time. Go on back out there and meet him. Bring him here. We can't take any chances. Just a minute, you two. Bring your burrow and come on over here. Well, this is a strange way to greet visitors at St. Thomas. This real gold? Get the rope off the burrow. I'll drag him out of sight. You don't have to be afraid anymore. Everything's all right now. I, I was afraid no one would hear my message. Then it was you who tapped out the SOS on the bell. Yes, and then one of the men came into the tower after me, and I had to run. Well, where's Father Diego? 
in the chapel study. Those men are holding him there. We've got to do something to save him. Well, that's why we're here. Can you get up in that bell tower again? Uh-huh. I'll climb over the roof this time. Good. I want you to ring those bells. It's a signal to Captain Reining that we've gotten into the school. Yes, sir. What do you suppose is taking Jake so long? Jake, who knows? Well, I don't like him. We shouldn't have come here. You're starting to get on my nerves, Will. This place has got you spooked. Who's ringing them bells, Padre? Who's ringing them? I don't know. Well, it ain't time for lunch and it ain't time for church. Who's ringing them? Maybe it's that crazy Indian kid. Take a look, and whoever it is, take care of them. And check on Jake, too. those bells keep ringing, Padre? Why do they keep ringing? The bells of St. Thomas give comfort to most people. They are a symbol of love and peace. Now give me the willies. I'm going to stop them. Stop them if I have to kill everybody in this school or do it. Get out that door. Come on, move. trapped is not very pleasant, is it? I'm not trapped. Not as long as I've got you in front of my gun. Open the door. Will, Jake, where are you? They'll never answer you, Baxter. You're all alone now. Throw down your gun. Captain Reining, I'm riding out of here. I'm taking Father Diego with me. If anybody tries to stop me, the Padre gets a bullet in the back. There he is, and he's got Father Diego. Captain, the bells of St. Thomas have served a twofold purpose today. Then you aren't mad at me for ringing him so much. No, Peter. I'm proud of you. You've done much honor to the school and to our people. Not to mention the reward of $2,000. I imagine the school can use it. We have to be on our way, Father Diego. Goodbye. Goodbye, Peter. Are you 
grandios. www.toyguntown.com and we hope you'll join us again and thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again on down the trail. <laughs>